Hello, my name is Ben, and it is a new day, it is a new era, we have a new theme song, and a lot going on. I'm working on a new song, which you might have heard a little snippet of at the very beginning, and I'll kind of introduce later on, but uh, my name is Ben, and welcome, and I'm glad we're back, and you are watching Sunday Fun Day. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It is good to be back. And what we're going to be doing today is I'm going to be taking you through a song that I've worked on somewhat in isolation. And it's a song that a good good friend of mine, partner in crime, uh, that I tend to work with uh, goes by the name of Ryan Main. And I work with this guy. You know, I'm, I'm in a band. <laughs> you know, so are we all, right? Uh, but um, I, I work with this guy uh, frequently on music uh, collaboration and mixes. And uh, we're actually working on an album, new material, which uh, will reveal itself over time uh, throughout the po- podcast. And, um, you know, I'll... Uh, eventually come out with this material, um, you know, online and, and you'll all be able to hear it. But, uh, he came out with a fun challenge the other day on his Facebook profile, which was working on an old skinny puppy song called Warlock. And what I want to do today is essentially just kind of go through it go through all the different parts and show you what I did. So I'm going to kind of just let this play a little bit more softly in the background. And what I'm going to do is just kind of go through the different parts. Uh, So for... Um, first off, let's just play the intro, uh, parts that I have. So I have kind of like an intro A and B scene and then a pre-verse scene and a main verse one and two scene. Um, so just kind of focusing on the intro A on B patterns for right now, what I got going on is kind of a main drum kit, uh, that you can hear with this kick and snare line. And then the hi-hat is actually uh, some sheet metal that I recorded inside of my studio here. So I I used to work in a metal warehouse a long, long time ago and, um, you know, very manual physical labor. And I listened to a lot of industrial music, um, you know, just coming up as a teenager and young adult and still do to this day. So Skinny Puppy is one of my staples, uh, one of my go-tos, you know, along with Front 242 and uh, things like Neubaut and, and you know, old school industrial where they literally used to find like grinders and metal and like just things in nature, things in the world, but things that were man-made, you know, and sort of almost like left behind or trash you know, or rubble or, you know, just things that were discarded by other people in a, in a machine like or factory like setting and then used in a new setting, in a studio setting to make music, you know, and to make industrial music. So that's where a lot of the first industrial music uh, took its roots. And so I wanted to use the same sort of style or the same, some of the same techniques in doing this song. So the hi hats themselves are actually sheet metal. And if we look at, um, if I actually enable one of these hi-hat patterns on, like, say, this uh, intro B, and I'll make sure to show you some good B-roll of uh, the machine lighting up while this plays so you can kind of see what this looks like. It's really cool because I basically just, you know, I really uh, just utilized to death the the note repeat you know it's the arpeggiator 
it's beautiful you know it's the most it's the simplest thing you know if you're composing a song and you can just take any sound any synth sound any drum sound any whatever and you just want to arpeggiate it to the beat of your song do it and it's at the touch of a button and that's what this is so i recorded what i did let me show you this sample i recorded a number of let's see it's not really showing me where it's lit up but you can see the transients i recorded a number of hits of basically me hitting the sheet metal in my room and so if you hear that hi-hat sound you know i have it turned on right now it's in group B, it's a sheet metal group. And I basically have now all of these sliced up into, um, there we go, that's where we can edit. You can see the slices. So I, I have all of, the, all of the hits basically sliced up and that's what you're hearing in terms of, you know, when, when these sounds play. Um, and sometimes I'm just playing a couple of sounds. Other times I might be playing five or six sounds or eight sounds. So that's why I want, you'll see, I'll show you a video kind of, of what this looks like B-roll style. And it's, it was really cool. It's really cool. It's really fun. It's really fun to, in a matter of moments, um, you know, in a matter of moments. And I'll do this on a video too one day. I just didn't want to do it for this song because I wanted to try to work on this really quickly. But, and you know, one day I'll show you in a matter of moments, moments, guys, it takes seconds. I hook up a microphone, I point it at my sheet metal, and I start banging on it. Right? No beat, no pattern, no, just banging on it. Just getting different sounds. You get at least 16, right? And then come in here to sample, come in here to slice, and then start detecting mode, detect, you know, make the adjustments of sensitivity. And then I had all of those, I had all those hits recorded, sliced out, and dropped onto this group that you see here, this light blue one, in under a minute or two. You know, I forget exactly how long it takes, but it was, you know, something like it's unprecedented, guys, how long or how short amount of time, how not long it takes to have an idea, create an idea, have a concept, have a, an intention. I want to use metal. I want to use industrial sounds, you know, and then to be able to execute on it, boom, in a couple of minutes and get it done. It was fucking amazing. And so later that night, what I then also did is you hear these claps going on. Here, let me, let me solo this group. Those are dope sounding claps, if I say so myself. And it was really cool. I didn't take a video of this either. Again, I'm, you know, I'll do this one day so you can see it. But I literally sat my family down on the couch behind me and I sat in this chair they sat right here and I said three two one and I didn't count it out loud but I was like three. and we would clap and so I just captured you know up how many did I capture uh so not 16 I got I'll also put maybe a b-roll of this as well but uh, I got eight, nine to 11. I got 11 pads. So I got 11 nice sounding claps. Basically, you know? So you heard, you, you heard me kind of... kind of playing those claps but uh you know amazing job by my family and what i did to treat the claps then i i put some transient master on it and this is amazing by the way transient master 
because you can really just dial in, you know, how much, how sharp, you know, just the, the, it's a, it's a fantastic kind of compression, uh, tool. Uh, and then decapitator, man. I, I wanted to hear some distortion. I wanted to hear some dirt on the claps. They were really clean. They are really, you know, I just recorded them using the same vocal mics as a Shure SM7. Uh, so with some foam and things going on in this room, there's also some foam behind the TV that you guys don't really see. But it sounds okay. In the middle of this room, it sounds all right. Um, there's not uh, that many... There's not that much reverb on it. So then I put some uh, R-verb, some Waves R-verb on it as well and um i'll kind of pull these up if you want to see what these settings are like and then i just did some ssl channel looks like we have some clipping going on here now from me just jacking with it probably uh but did some sensible things like I did, it looks like i did a cut here uh to about almost 100 Added a little bit of 8K. I added a little bit of 0.8K, interestingly. Added lots of, like, like 0.8K. <clears throat> so it looks like I took some deep out and then added some deep back, for whatever reason. I thought it sounded good. Um, and, yeah, I have some reverb on there, and that's it. So if I turn these off, you can hear what the clap sounded like beforehand. Almost got to turn it up. So you can hear it. So then, you know, transient master. Adding a little sustain, decapitator. This is where it really just juices it up and adds most of the character right here. And then reverb, wanted to add some, some just reverb sound. And SSL. And SSL, I have it set uh, to a nice uh, gate, it looks like, so that it's... So it's, yeah, it's, it's got a reverb tail, but then it also just cuts off so that it's, you know, there's no... Before you turn that off, you heard a little bit of, because I was distorting it or just, you know, juicing it with some saturation, you heard a little bit of that room tone. You know, I was, pro I was probably grooving with my body, you know what I mean? Keeping a, <laughs> a beat or so something my family could go along to. But it was cool. It's a really cool experience because this is it's probably the first thing that I've had three of all you know three of my family members so myself my son and my wife all sat here in the room and did a clap 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 so that we get these different clap sounds and it turns out turned out amazing and then when you hear it in the mix um it's perfect and so this intro part this isn't supposed to have that So you really get the claps just by himself. And then, um, you know, the elephant in the room is not really an elephant. It's going to be really fun, actually. Um, but there's a Charles Manson sample that goes on this song. And we're, you know, I talked to my buddy. We're going to use the actual sample. There's no doubt about it. So we just got to find it. But I'll load that in here in the coming days and uh we'll probably do another walkthrough and i'll show you you know as that comes in here what that sounds like so let's check out um let's check out the preverse scene so after you start hearing some vocals bitch cringe Sloppy. So I'm probably going to do some vocals on here as well. It's going to be fun as hell. But then you start hearing this. So what new thing you're hearing on here now is this arpeggiated synth. And it's just one layer. 
uh, for now, but what it is is uh, Super 8, one of my favorite new reactor synths. I knew it would be able to do this uh, type of a sound very easily, and I, I, I was very, e you know, I, I think I literally went in the browser of machine to super eight and searched arpeggiated and found this sound made a few minor adjustments where it kind of opened up the filter uh with the uh uh filter envelope kind of just the way i wanted it and kind of there's a little bit of distortion character a touch of fm there's not much going on here other than that you know oh i did turn the unison on so we have two voices going it's, you know some stereo spread and things i like that sound it's very 80s, you know, very, I, 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 I want to not necessarily be period specific, but I want to uh, uh, do a justice to the types of materials they were working, you know, Skinny Puppy, they were working with at the time, 1989, 88, 89, and, um, you know, just do it justice to the genre. And this, I've always wanted to do something like this in, in, in a very simple and in, inspirational way. And I can tell you, this has just been an absolute joy. Just been an absolute fucking joy to work on uh, over the last couple of days. In isolation, like I said, I, I, I worked on it purposefully because I haven't really done so in a while. I've been working on stuff on the podcast and just like talking through it as I work on it. And that's cool. I'm not saying that's not cool. Uh, but as a music producer, you do have to take some time to just work on things sometimes and, just, and work at the speed of your intuition and not at the speed of your mouth moving and talking, talking about shit, <laughs> talking shit, you know, um, flipping gums is cool and all, um, but it's been an absolute joy to work on this. And so that was the um, pre-verse part. Let's check out some main verse. So there's a new pattern on the uh, ARP synth, but the same sound. And then there's also, very cool, very cool part. Um, guitar part. And what I did, What I did is I actually recorded guitars and sampled them into machine. And so same exact concept. I literally, you know, recorded sort of different stabs, different sounds, but just a E, you know, E chord key of the song. And I even did an old Manson technique on a couple of these pads. I, I did like a, like a high E and then detuned it down to a low E and then did like a low E and uptuned it to a high E to mess around with some like pitch distortion techniques. Um, so those sounds are pretty sweet as well. That's that last one, that high one. That's that low one. And that actually sounds kind of cool, just fucking around with that. I didn't even know that would sound cool. What I did for this particular pattern is I literally just like laid down on the note repeat on a couple of different pads and just... It's because some of them are like stabs and real open and, and others are kind of more arpeggiated, like palm muted uh, guitar stabs. Uh, they all sound different and I have them all set to the same, and same with the sheet metal, I have them all set to the same choke group so that they all choke each other out and a voice polyphony setting of one so that each sound or each cell chokes itself out so that when I play 
Uh, it's so it, you don't have sounds multiplying over one another. It doesn't sound like shit. You know, it just it sounds more musical to me anyway that way. Um, so I, I tend to probably always set it that way every time. But um, as I said, it's been an absolute joy to work on this song so far. And I uh, was able to kind of talk through it in mostly 20 minutes, you know, not, not, uh, not too bad. So when you hear everything together, it it's, sounds badass. Yeah, very cool stuff, cool song, um, and going to basically continue working on it, um, you know, and we'll check back in on the podcast every now and then and kind of see how uh, things are coming along for this particular track. Uh, eventually, I'm going to do what I've done in the past, uh, which is basically do a Pro Tools dump and, and kind of record everything down into Pro Tools as audio and really refine down you know all the different uh patterns and parts but i'm still in creative mode at this point uh for this particular track and i'd rather just kind of keep for now anyway adding parts to it adding uh you know adding to keep it in the terminology adding groups adding patterns adding sounds sampling and recording audio in my studio you know So vocal or otherwise, claps, metal, you know, all sorts of shit. Good times. And on that note, until next time.